Welcome back to Trigger Time TV. Lewis Frost with Phobus Solutions here with Tim Burke, JTAC Ranch. Today we're going to talk to you about is the importance of natural point of aim during long range shooting. Specifically during the zeroing process and how natural point of aim can ultimately affect the zeroing process. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Tim slowly get down to position and we're going to talk about how Tim builds his position in order to establish that natural point of aim. So if Tim's going to move down to a kneeling position, put both, put both hands on the ground, now he's going to slowly walk his body out and then he's going to present the rifle, tuck it up into the shoulder pocket, take his support side hand, come up underneath, and give that rearward su uh, support underneath the back side of the gun. So now what we're going to talk about right here is where Tim's body lays on the ground. His heels are flat on the deck, his knees are slightly rolled outboard, so he gets as much flat on flat contact. His hips are driven into the dirt, so he's basically got as much contact with the dirt uh, Mother Earth as possible. So now we'll ask Tim, where are your crosshairs, Tim? About three feet to the right of the target. So his target, his crosshairs are three feet to the right of the target. Now a lot of times what people want to do is they want to torque their torso and what that does is that creates muscular input into the gun. So we can't return that exact same amount of muscular input every single time. And if we fire that round with that muscular input, now that gun is going to go to the unsupported side. So we asked Tim right now, if you move your hips, go ahead and move your hips to the right. Now where does that put your crosshairs? Dead center. Dead center. So now he's got a good, solid, dead center position. All right, guys, let's go ahead and go hot. All right, Tim, build that good position. Fire when ready. Good hit. Open the bolt. Send another one. And open the bolt. All right, guys, so what you were able to see by establishing that good, consistent, natural point aim is Two rounds that impacted a steel at just over 250 yards, very center of the target. Guys, I hope this helps, and thanks for tuning in to Trigger Time TV. Hey folks, Charles Sumner with Glock here with Trigger Time TV. Today we're going to talk about handgun or weapon maintenance. And not necessarily just cleaning, we're going to talk about that, but we're going to also talk about the things we need to do to keep those guns in good running order when you're carrying them. One of the things is whatever particular weapon you have, be it the Glock or, or another manufacturer, is check the owner's manual for that to make sure what they recommend you do, what they recommend the cleaning procedures and so forth. And once, once you do that, learn how to take the gun apart to the degree that they tell you to. As far as field stri stripping the gun, what parts to lubricate, uh, and get familiar with that. If at some point you need help on that, contact a, uh, a gun store or a gunsmith and get them to show you what you need to do to how to keep the maintenance on that gun. The other thing that you need to do when you're, when you're lubricating the gun or once you've cleaned it and putting lubrication on it, is not to put too much. Too much lubrication is just as bad as not enough lubrication. But the other thing that you need to do is when you carry that gun on a daily basis and you get lint, you get dust and so forth, is not to wait until you shoot the gun a month down the road, but it's to do a, a monthly or a weekly or even sometimes a daily cleaning of it. We're taking a lubrication and putting just a little bit of oil on it and wiping the gun down, getting the dust out of the magazine, getting the dust out of the magazine well, and wiping all the fingerprints off the gun, wiping inside just a little bit and putting the proper lubrication on there. This has been a little bit of the maintenance things that you need to go through, and if you do that, your gun will operate better. Hey everybody, Chase Jenkins from Talon Defense. I'm here with my good buddy Nate Murr from Kinetic Development Group. Today we're going to be looking at the EOTech Magnified Optic 2.5 to 10. Nate, this is kind of your world. Tell us what you like about this new optic. So this is part of their Voodoo lineup, but this is actually a really well thought out magnified optic. So it's a 2.5 by 10 power, which is enough magnification for like an SPR uh, or like a mid-range rifle. So this, this would be perfect on a 5.56 five, six, or 7.62 gas gun I would put it on. What I like about this is that they match their turrets, their reticle, so you can get it either in uh, mills or MOA and how you uh, adjust your dials is it's really really fast. You can just take this top cover off 
float your dials back to zero once you have a good solid point A and point of impact on the, on the optic and then put the cap back on. So you don't need any Allens or any specialty tools whatsoever to, to flush out your turret. So I think that's pretty neat. It's a really lightweight optic for, for its size. It has a removable sunshade. So I, I, I think it's a pretty cool optic. 30 millimeter tube, good light. Right. The first thing I want is durability in my optic, right? And that was one thing I noticed that for its size, it was light. So it's not going to weigh my rifle down. You were, you were liking the reticle. Yes. Yeah, I like that they have the option of either mill or MOA. So regardless of which system you prefer or learned on, uh, they have it offered in, in both. And then also the, the illuminated reticle adjustments on the side, you have a master on and off, and then it's, a, it's kind of like a modified version of their, their holographic sights, how you can plus up or go down on the power and brightness. I like that myself, so we turn it on, positive on, right, and then we uh, dimmed it or turned it up with the actual push button. Yes. Very, I like yeah, that, I like that more than the dial. Two mils. All right, and we've got it on one of your mounts. So as you can see, I mean, it's a 30 millimeter tube. This is on 30 millimeter rings on a side lock mount. Um, the whole thing, it can't be more than two pounds. It's pretty lightweight. So yeah, I think it'd be great on an on a AR. Great. Okay, folks, check out the EOTech website for the new Voodoo line, Chase Jenkins with Tyler Defense. See you on the range.